Earthworm Jim 2 video game review. Through the nefarious and intricate plan of standing behind one shoulder and then tapping the other shoulder so that the person turning around won't see who's there, Psycho manages to kidnap, or abduct rather, the beautiful Princess What's-Her-Face, and, or What's-Her-Name rather, something like that, and Jim, of course, has to get her back. And, yeah, I suppose that's about it. I, that's all the story the game really provides, anyway. In order to get her back, he will have to return abducted cows to their barns, fight through, I guess, food whilst being attacked by straws and really aggressive salt shakers, go through, I guess basically filing cabinet hell. Yeah. This is... <laughs> I've really only tried these two games. I understand that there's at least one more, but I think the third one is a 3D game, and I'm not touching that because I can't really imagine that being any good. There's just some things that should stay 2D, you know, <laughs> Sonic. So, anyway, I suppose I should start with the positives. For anyone who liked the first, and I guess the show, I don't really know anything about it, but for those who like the silliness and just the utterly out of nowhere kind of humor, this definitely delivers that, you know. Like I said, you you literally pick up cattle and move it to a barn whilst watching out for those pesky UFOs that, you know, I guess the farmers were right. You know, cattle... UFOs really do abduct cattle. And, you know... I believe it's level 3, literally starts with the title card, Jim is now a blind s flying salamander, or something like that. I, I wouldn't even know what to... I know that a, a salamander is a fish, but yeah, I, I think. This game is making me doubt even very basic things. Every level ends with uh, an animated shot of two cows, one of whom says, well done, and the other, the other one just smiles. I don't even know what that means. The, the basic gameplay is essentially the same. There's... You know, for anyone who doesn't know the first game, basically it's a platformer, action platformer. You have a fully automatic submachine gun, which you can fire in, you know, basically, at least, you know, all four basic directions, up, down, left, right. I think you can also sort of angle it, but I don't know, I have a bit more trouble doing that in this one than in the first one, but I think you can still do so. You have, you, you can use your head as a whip because, you know, you are an earthworm in, you know, a suit that allows you to, you know, move around with, you know, it, it basically leaves you as a, almost a human, you know, anthropomorphizes you, I guess would be the term, if that can be used as a verb. And, you know, you you can use, in the first game it was using your head, or your, your worm form, to, you know, whip into these sharp instruments that you could then, you know, basically hooks. 
and you could then go from, you know, through the air over several times, almost like swinging on vines, only, you know, using your head as the vine, essentially. In this one, it's... It's this green, gooey thing, and I think it has eyes. I think it's sentient, but yeah. It can also be used as a parachute. And it's it's kind of funny looking when he you know when you use it as a parachute. Which you really won't do all that often, but yeah, I'll I'll get more into that. What this definitely does have on the first is more weapons. Basically the first and the actual ability to shift between weapons, you know, so you don't have to use the most recent weapon you've picked up, which may be your most powerful one, which you may want to save first. Basically the first one has just the submachine gun and this, you know, heat-seeking missile and then this, you know, I don't remember exactly, but this powerful projectile, I believe. I guess it's basically like like a powered up version of the submachine gun. In this, you don't have the powered up version of the submachine gun, but there is a weapon that has the exact same function, and the heat-seeking missiles are now... Honestly, I think they're... Houses, very small houses, and I have no idea how that's supposed to make any sense, and I have a strong feeling that it's specifically not supposed to make any sense. Other than that, you have this additional submachine gun, which is basically like a glove, which fires out, with, with three fingers, and it fires out of all three fingers. It eats through ammo like you wouldn't believe, but it's pretty handy if, you know, it makes you aim faster, basically, because you don't, you know, you're now shooting in three directions at once, so you really don't have to think as much about the aiming. Then there is this, basically, BFG kind of thing, which, you know, basically takes out everything on the... It's... <laughs> What's it called? It's... Yeah, I'll... Anyway. Other weapons, I suppose that's... Well, there's this really weird thing that produces bubbles. I think I vaguely remember when I was younger playing this that I found some way to make them useful, but I don't know. Nowadays, it seems like they're just, you know, you pick up that weapon and if you're not quick to switch away from it, you might waste time firing some of it when you're have to actually take out an enemy. It's, it seems kind of useless, but I could be wrong. I believe those are the weapons. So, yeah, basically you're running, gunning, and solving these puzzles that usually require speed and reflexes and some... I'm not sure thinking is really the word, but just, you know, you do got to put effort into it, you know. Maybe more like, you know, really good hand-to-eye coordination, like in the first game. But, yeah. Another thing this does have on the first is the graphics are better. But I'm afraid that's also where I get into the negatives of it, because while the graphics are technically better, definitely, higher quality, there are a lot of graphic glitches, and I mean, some of them you don't even have to look for, they're almost unmissable. The, the salamander level, there are these red things, I think you're inside a colon. I, I'm not sure, but, and it would certainly fit with, you know, the... <sighs> There's actually less gross-out comedy in this one, unless you count, you know, the green nasty thing, which you're constantly using. But other than that, there's less gross-out comedy, much less, in this one than the first one. Anyway, 
the yeah so you yeah you're you're moving through this colon or whatever it is red stuff if you touch it you will be hurt and they're constantly moving like pulsating almost and I'd say a third of every one of these, let's call them tentacles, a third of them, you can see where it sort of, it gets cut off, like, you know, there's something above it. You know, I don't know how much sense this makes to people who don't know just a little bit of the animation or computer stuff, but, yeah, basically, you can tell, you know, it destroys the illusion, at least you know, for that bit, for the, you know, when, when you can see it, it's really hard to, and, you know, where in the first we had this full level dedicated to this horrible character called Pete, Pete the Puppy, I guess, or something, Peter, where you had to keep him out of danger which is difficult and frustrating, but really satisfying when you get through it. In this one, he's just... you just have to make sure... it's one of those games where something is thrown from one side of the screen to the other, and along the way it's gonna fall into the ground, unless you run it under it, excuse me, with something that makes it bounce, and you have to transport it to the other side. <laughs> Peter is at one end, and he's the one receiving what you're, you know, making sure it gets there safely. And on the other end is Psycho, and he's supposed to be hanging out of this building, this sort of tower. And I get why they made him move so erratically, so dynamically, you know? He's basically not standing still. But it just... I suppose it's not the animation itself, there's just something to it. I'm not that, you know, traversed in the whole animation thing, but you can very clearly tell that he's just been placed there. It doesn't look like he's actually sticking out of a window of that building. And there's just, this stuff is all over the place, you know. There's, you know, when you get the cows to the barn, they get... What would seem to me really brutally, but anyway, they are harvested for, not quite as nasty as you might think, for milk. You know, I don't know if it's a machine doing it, but it definitely, you know, you don't see the harvesting itself, thank goodness, but you do see the milk coming out of, you know, on the other end of this machinery kind of thing, and it comes out of a shower head, and again, there's a shower head and milk comes out from sort of underneath it, but you can see the holes in the shower head and the milk is not coming out of it. And again, it just... I think it worked better in the first. I, there's not anything. I can't think of anything off the top of my head from in the first game where the graphics really don't feel, you know, quite... You know, yeah, it just, it's, it has all these little imperfections that really draw attention to themselves. You know, I tend to be, I don't particularly care about graphics, you know, not that much. But with this, it just, I don't know, it just really feels too attention grabbing. It's... And it's probably also because it's not the only thing in the game that is like this. I suppose that's about it for the graphics. So I'll also talk about just the basic movement of Jim feels more slugged. Like in the first one, he feels very light. And in this one, it's not quite... It, it is not as bad as in the Hercules you know, video game the Disney Hercules video game, but it is still, it's, he feels heavier than he did in the first. And sometimes, you know, you really, you will actually lose a level just because of that. 
And that's just really annoying because it shouldn't be like that. You know, that shouldn't be what's costing you. You know, it should be your skill, not just that the game is, you know, feels not properly done. And that's really, that's really what it all comes down to with the, almost all the problems in this game, in my opinion. It just feels incomplete. It feels like they rushed it. The... The basic, the sounds is another area. The sounds aren't bad, but there are way too few of them. In an early level, I noted that most of my enemies sounded like salt shakers. And on this particular playthrough, I'd actually forgotten the level. It's the second to last. And it's cleverly titled Level 8, you know, A-T-E. And yeah, this game is only nine levels long. I will get to that. Basically, you know, it's the food level. And yeah, there is that salt shaker that I mentioned earlier in it. And that's where the sound is from. But there are all these other enemies who have the same sound. And it doesn't fit in the least. And it, it's, again, it's just distracting. It, and, you know, it has this sense of incompletion. I would rather these enemies not make any sound other than... there. There's, I'd say, three different types of enemies, distinctly different types of enemies, that all have this sound. And I just don't see why it should... I, I can't think of any other explanation, really, than that they rushed it, that they didn't put as much effort into it as this really deserves, and as the first got. The first had no shortage of sounds. Every single level had several new sounds. You know... But yeah, nine levels to the game. That's how short it is. You know, the first one isn't that huge of a game. And while it has 20 levels, granted, like, seven of those, seven of those are essentially the same, you know, just increasing in difficulty. But so is three of these. You know, the puppy love, as it's called. Three of the levels. That's, that's six left for original concepts. That's not a lot. You know, again, with the first... And add to that, these concepts are just not that interesting. At, at least to me. You know, some of them... Some... Well, some of the, in, some, some of the concepts themselves are interesting enough, but I can't put my finger on very much in this game that other games don't have. And with the first, I really could, you know. I start listing examples, but I'd really rather, you know, just refer you to my video on the first game where I go through several, several of them. So yeah, you know, basically, you do have, you know, in this game, you fly as the, you know, salamander, you, you fly in plenty of other games, you know, even, you know, this you know, platform 2D games, other games where you fly, and there's one, I think it's called inflatable head, or inflated head, something like that, and basically, Jim takes a big old puff of a helium pump, and his head grows, and he can now float upwards, and you can make him blow some air out, as well as you know, stick his thumb in his mouth and blow his head back a size. And I think there's like three sizes. And, you know, obviously the bigger your head is, the more you're going to float upwards, where there is, of course, stuff that might hurt you. In fact, Evil the cat from the first game returns, and he tries to make your head blow. 
and if he if he if he succeeds, you will of course plummet down to the ground, which you know is an annoyance and a setback. And you know he does this by shooting. I don't know. You know he has basically a, a blow gun, and he shoots these little pebbles at you, I guess. And he also uses his tail as a propeller and then lets go and charges at, you know, downwards, directly downwards with his claws out. But yeah, basically, you know, you, um, you can switch between these three sizes of Jim's head for these segments and thus determine if you're floating upwards, which you have to to get through the level, or if you're basically staying in place or somewhere in the middle. And that's, you know, not too bad. It's, you know, I don't know. I, again, I'd say there are other games that really have that kind of thing. And then, you know, Puppy Love, basically, if I wanted, I could find, you know, a game of matching or possibly greater quality on the internet, you know, for free. So, and obviously, I don't know, maybe back then they didn't have it as much, maybe, heck, I don't know, maybe this is the first game to have that, but it is just not that compelling, you know. Maybe also because on the internet, it'll actually have a you know, points counter and maybe a high score or something. This, you're just getting through the level, you know, you're basically just trying to get through it, un you know, basically trying to transport all the things until eventually Psycho will throw a bomb, which you then have to get all the way back to Pete, who will then throw it. You know, I don't know why exactly Jim can't just catch it himself and throw it back, but whatever. And if you drop, I believe it's four, you know, I should just go ahead and say, basically what you have to make sure doesn't fall on the ground. I'm not sure if they are actually puppies, or maybe they're just stuffed animals that look like puppies. They look a lot like Peter. I really hope this is not like his offspring. Because it gets dropped on the ground if you don't prevent that. And it just... It's kind of disturbing that it just, you know... Breaks, or dies, or whatever. Yeah, anyway. If you drop four of them, Pete's gonna get mad. And anyone who's played the first game knows that when Pete get Pete's Pete gets mad, Jim has to pay. So basically, you know, Pete chews out Jim rather literally in his Hulk form, and that's it. Now, this most recent time I only played it on easy. It took me less than an hour and a half to get through the entire game, which tells you just how short it is. And I really don't particularly feel like playing it, playing it again, you know. And it has been ages since I played it last. I've played the first one far more. I enjoy that one far more. But anyway, yeah. In the first, you actually lost health when, you know, getting bitten by Pete and in... For Pete's sake, the level in the first game, he actually carries you back in the level and spits you out. So it's a setback. In this, it's, you know, you don't lose health, at least not on easy difficulty, so it's really just an, a mild annoyance, you know. And yeah, you know, the, the level doesn't go on for that long, and it's still just a little bit boring, you know, it doesn't. Yeah. One. Thing that it's somewhat different. You're flying and you're trying to transport this bomb, and yeah, there's stuff being shot at you. Some of it from the ground, other stuff, you know, from vessels in the air. And you have to avoid the bomb blowing up before you get to the end. It's actually it's major snot or whatever, major mucus from the first game. You know who you in the first game had a bungee jumping tournament with. He now has, you know, he's spread and yeah, so there's just, you know, his forces and his mucus is, 
you know, more widespread, and now you have to transport a bomb to him in order to take him out. And that actually takes me nicely into something else. There is not at all a big enough presence of boss enemies in this. I suppose you could... No, I don't suppose you could. You can't call Major Mucus a boss, because all you gotta do is transport the bomb to him, and that's it. You know, other than that, I suppose level 8's boss is really the only one. Other than that, there's maybe just, you know, a final puzzle or, you know, something. But, yeah, basically, level 8 has a boss very aptly named <sighs> Flaming Yawn, I believe. Which and and he is a bore. He is he is far too easy. It's it's too little, too late. You know, at that point, it's just. But part of it is maybe just you. You really don't feel like you're being challenged. You don't feel like you're doing anything in this game compared to the first. You know, it has the humor and some of the levels are entertaining and the game can definitely be challenging. And I would imagine on higher difficulties, it's been too long since I played it, but I would imagine it's even more of a challenge. And, you know, it definitely does have some stuff, you know, if you play this game, you will have nightmares about file cabinets. You have been warned. But on the whole, it's just, it's too short. It just isn't all that satisfying. And... Yeah, you know, but on the whole, the ending is still, you know, pretty hilarious. It's not exactly as good as the first game's ending, but it is, it's very much in the same vein, definitely. And, you know, along the way, there are some great gags, you know. The gang in one of the first levels, actually that, it might be, the end of the first level has a hilarious gag. And, you know, yeah, a couple of other levels. The file cabinet, paper everywhere level, the ending of that is just abstract and bizarre. And hysterical. But yeah, I suppose that is about it. Yeah, all in all, just not enough really, you know, unique experiences from the game, especially compared to the first. Not as fun, much less memorable, really feels like much less effort was put into it, way too short, and not enough replay value. It does have, you know, where the first game, or at least the first game's PC version, I can't speak for any other version, has a level selector. This one has essentially the same, but you have to, like, get certain objects in a level in order to be able to skip it, which, you know... That adds some challenge, at least. But it... Yeah, I think that's about it. I could go on forever, so I'll stop here. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.